Hello, I hope you all are well. I'm mainly making this video as kind of a time capsule for myself to explain what it was like during the 2020 coronavirus pandemic or whatever they end up calling it. So officially, it's the uh, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2 and it causes the coronavirus disease of 2019 or COVID-2019. So who knows what history we'll call it, but I'm guessing we'll just call it the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. That's, uh, that's what we're in the middle of right now. It's March 22nd, 2020 right now. I think that maybe the thing that will kind of give the, the uh, best perspective would be to give a timeline of what it's been like uh, the past few weeks, just to explain where, where we're at and uh, you know, what it feels like to be in this moment in history. I'm here in Los Angeles County in Southern California. And so apparently this started back in China in December. And I was probably vaguely aware of, of this news in January a little bit. Um, in February for sure, um, I remember seeing news that China had built a hospital in like 10 days. Um, and also there were uh, in, in the news several cruise ships uh, that were having um, outbreaks and then um, were being refused to dock and that kind of thing, being quarantine, quarantined. Uh, so, but at the time I was mainly focused on getting to February 29th, which was the end of the session A and an online class I was teaching and also the day I was going to present at a conference, um, just an hour long thing. And then also the day I was going to fly off to my cousin's wedding. So I was just trying to get to the end of the month. And I was kind of not really paying attention to some of that other stuff that happened. So at the conference on February 29th, it was uh, a topic of conversation, but not the main thing on everybody's mind. Same thing when I went off to the wedding at the beginning of March the, uh, that day. Um, people were talking about it and it was kind of on everybody's mind, but it wasn't that big of a deal. But I'd say over the next few days, it started becoming a major topic on everyone's mind. I flew home on March 4th, which was during spring break at Biola. Uh, so here, here's sort of a timeline of what happened. Uh, March 6th, the University of Washington announced that they were closing. Uh, that same day, Biola told returning students from spring break that they should check with the health center if they'd been to Washington or some other uh, countries where there were outbreaks. And then things started happening pretty quickly. March 7th, on Saturday, over that weekend, my boss announced, hey, we're going to have an emergency meeting to determine if we're ready, if we need to close. Not that we're closing, but just in case we need to, we need to see if, if that's a possibility or how that would work. Uh, not close, but go um, switch to remote teaching online, like University of Washington had. So that was March 7th. March 9th, Monday, we had that meeting to discuss if we were ready, and we, and we are. Uh, the next day, March 10th, Biola announced that Grandparents Day, which was scheduled for Friday, would be canceled. Um, March 11th, uh, they announced that we'd be moving online for large events like chapel. So things where there was 250 people or more, Biola announced that we were canceling those things and doing them online. And then later that day, the president said this. He said, in preparation for the campus move towards fully remote courses, and he also talked about the move to remote and the start date. So anybody who was reading carefully could have read the signs even at March 11th that Biola was closing for, um, or, or that uh, we were moving to remote. So they're making a distinction between online classes, which are designed to be online, and remote delivery, which means that we were sort of switching the on-campus classes to be taught remotely. So that was March 11th. Um, March 12th, Thursday night, there was an official announcement that came out around 8 o'clock at night to everybody at Biola saying that classes were suspended for March 16 and 17 and that remote delivery would start March 23rd. Um, so they were basically saying, okay, uh, no more classes for the next week to let teachers get ready and then we'll start on March 23rd, which is tomorrow. Okay, so also March 12th, the spring competitions were canceled. Uh, they said dorms are going to stay open, but and you can go home if you want. Um, but there were some some questions even then about larger gatherings, and in fact, one of the emails uh, hinted that maybe graduation um, was in question if they would have a graduation ceremony. So the next day, March 13th on Friday, our church announced that they um, would be doing an online service on Sunday instead of meeting in person. 
Okay, so last weekend, March 14 and 15, uh, I went to the grocery store twice once. Well, I went to a bunch of grocery stores. So I went on Saturday morning early just to kind of look around and see what things were like. Um, I took some pictures of long lines and just looked at the empty shelves. And then Sunday, um, I went again. And so the thing I noticed on Saturday was that there was a lot of uh, non-perishables that were out of stock. And then by Sunday night, I noticed a bunch of perishables were out of stock too. Also on March 15th, we had our first church service that was online. And that was actually remarkably uh, normal because they just kept the same schedule. We did all the same things. Uh, and we watched it um, in the living room and, and it felt very normal. Okay, so that brings us to last week. Last week was really busy because our department, I work for the Department of uh, digital learning. We were helping doing training and getting people set up and getting ready to start teaching online. And so we did that. Okay, so Monday, March 16th was an interesting day. That was the day we had our faculty senate meeting and we had it in the room and we were broadcasting it live, but we only let 50 people at a time in the room. And so a couple people had to wait until somebody left before somebody could come in since we weren't allowing more than 50 people in there. But I did go to the cafeteria that day and noticed that there were lots of people um, in the, at the cafeteria. Now the cafeteria had started making changes where you couldn't serve yourself, uh, you couldn't touch any of the utensils, they would they would serve things on a plate to you. And my favorite example is this: uh, these bananas that they were serving at the cafeteria. Later that day, the governor announced that gyms were closed and theaters and that restaurants couldn't have dine-in customers, only takeout and delivery. And then, then that next day, uh, Biola announced that the campus was closing to employees and that graduation was definitely postponed and that dorms were closing on campus too and that students had to be out by March 22nd. So fast forward two days, March 19th, uh, Governor Newsom issued a stay at home order uh, that was going to be, that is, is in effect all the way through till at least April 19th. Um, and it's for the whole state. So we could stay at home except to get groceries, medication, exercise, a couple essential businesses could remain open. Uh, but nobody really still knows kind of like the exact rules and exceptions. Then what happened? Let's see. Oh, that day Biola announced, hey, students, you better get out sooner than we said before. So move out by 2 p.m. March 21st. And then finally, March 21st, yesterday, there was another updated stay at home order uh, from the, the governor of California. Okay, so I may have gotten some of those dates wrong, but the main point is that it felt like a really fast pace of things. Every day some new announcement or some new restriction was coming out every other day. And uh, that, that timeline kind of helps you see what it was like the past two weeks. Um, so what does it feel like? That was a timeline. Let me just explain a little bit of what it's like. Um, Okay, I'm going to pause it right there because I feel like this video is getting a little bit too long. This is me a couple days later editing the video, so I'm going to split it into two pieces. Part one is what you just saw about me describing the timeline, and then part two will be about how it felt and uh, talking about finances and some of those things. Now, I will say I'm a little bit more optimistic than I was uh, this weekend when I recorded it. I was uh, kind of pessimistic back then, but if you're curious to see what I said then, um, subscribe so you can see that video when it comes out in a couple days. Oh, so by the way, this is what it looks like in my home office. When you combine a home office with the work office, it's kind of a mess. Uh, although, I actually, when I'm doing web conferences or meeting with my students, I try to frame it nice and neat so it looks, that, looks like everything is uh, framed nicely. So this is what it looks like to my students when they're in my class and also when I'm doing web conferences with my colleagues. See, I put some books and a flower on my bed, make it look nice. Anyway, okay, so subscribe to see part two. See you then.